Hi, everyone. Linda from Let's Talk Prepping. And I want to talk to you today about the growing food and drug shortages in the U.S. and what you can actually do about them. Let's go over and read an article here by my this guy that I really love is Michael Snyder, and he's very good. So let's go over here and see what he has to say. We're over here at the end of the American Dream dot com, and this is Michael Snyder, June fourteenth, twenty twenty three. Drug and food shortages are here, and they're going to get a lot worse. And he talks about a lot of experts didn't think that this would happen. Once the pandemic subsided, global supply chains were supposed to return to normal. But now hundreds of drugs are in short supply in the U.S. And even CNN is admitting we're in the midst of the worst crisis, the worst food crisis in modern history. And he says he did research for this article and he was stunned by what he discovered. Things are worse than he realized. He said, I knew a lot of drugs were in short supply, but it turns out there have been shortages of many of our basic antibiotics since October. And we've actually heard that as mainstream media news. And Pfizer is telling us that several types of penicillin will completely run out later this year. And he talks a little bit about penicillin from Pfizer here. And cancer centers are reporting that there's a shortage of a lot of chemotherapy drugs. And it seems like these are made in India. So you might be asking yourself, why are we manufacturing drugs in India and not the U.S.? And he says, once the war between the U.S. and China starts, it's going to be exceedingly difficult to get things shipped across the Pacific. And I think we'll go into that in another video about about the war. So what are we going to do then once the war starts? And even if we don't have a war, things are just getting so bad, so costly, so costly that there are going to be shortages and even more shortages than you even think about. And the New York Times is telling us there's a shortage of hundreds of drugs in the U.S., and before we talk about the food, let me go over here to this website. So here's drugs.com. And I did a whole video on this um, uh, probably two years ago or more. You can look here for all the medications. That'll just show you what talk about the medications. But if you want the current drug shortages, you can go right through here. And you can see which ones are resolved and which ones are discontinued. And look at them all. And this tells you over here the revision date. So you just go through here and look up your drug and see if it's in short supply and what the revision date says. And you go here and it says it was updated June 2nd, status current. This one is discontinued. And they didn't provide a reason for the shortage. So, drugs.com, if you want to know, and it's drugs.com slash drug hyphen shortages. Drugs.com slash drugs hyphen shortages. So, now let's go look at the food shortages. So, we're back here with Michael Snyder, the end of the American Dream.com. Meanwhile, global supplies of food just continue to get even tighter. Meanwhile, global supplies of food just continue to get even tighter, and this is going to g greatly affect consumers in, the con in this country. And uh, just a couple weeks ago, I did a video on what they were expecting to be short this year, but he talks about some other things here. According to Zero Hedge, cocoa supplies are becoming extremely high, extreme. According to Zero Hedge, cocoa supplies are becoming extremely tight, and this could push chocolate prices to dizzling heights. They've soared already 44% over the last nine months to seven-year highs. And the cocoa bean deficit worsens for the second consecutive year. 
So if you love chocolate, I would stock up now while you can. Problem with chocolate is it doesn't last that long. I don't know if you can stock up for a full year with chocolate. Um, I guess I'd love to, but I'm not sure. And Zero Hedge is also reporting there are serious concerns about sugar and coffee. Sugar prices hit decade highs on a global shortage fears in April, and the Robusta coffee prices hit a record high days ago on supply fears. There are just some grocery store aisles where inflation looks exceptionally sticky. But most of us could live without chocolate, sugar, and coffee. Well, coffee would be a tough one, wouldn't it? But what about the basics? One food bank in southern Georgia is warning they are facing a severe shortage of food and they're desperate for help. And they've got the biggest food shortage they've ever had in 40 years of their food bank. Since things are taking three, four, five, ten times as long to get to us as they used to, and rapid inflation is affecting a lot of people, a lot of our donors as well. So it really is a perfect storm. So their inventories are at record low levels. But the truth is, this is what Michael says, the truth is that supplies of food are only going to get tighter and tighter in the months ahead. The winter wheat harvest in Kansas this year is going to be the smallest since 1957. U.S. corn prices are expected to soar because the Corn Belt is being hit by the worst drought in 30 years. The size of the U.S. beef cow herd the size of the U.S. beef cow herd has fallen to the lowest level since 1962. And you know the government doesn't want us to eat meat. And the World Economic Forum, they're all against meat, so they wouldn't care. The orange harvest in Florida in 2023 will be 50% smaller than in 2022. Thanks to the crazy weather patterns, 90% of the Georgia peach crop this year has been wiped out. I've been managing to get peaches, organic peaches, at the grocery store, and they've been very good. I really don't know where they come from. Sometimes they tell you. On top of everything else, millions of Mormon crickets have invaded Nevada, and they're eating everything in sight. Crickets eat just about everything. And they're reducing the feed for grazing wildlife and livestock. Their feeding can contribute to soil. Their feeding can contribute to soil erosion, poor water quality, nutrient depend, nutrient depleted soils, and potentially causing damage to range and crop plant ecosystems. And drought encourages the Mormon cricket outbreaks. They can last several years, historically 5 to 21 years. And then, of course, if they spread even farther uh, north, south, east, and west, we're in big trouble. They cause substantial economic losses to rangeland, cropland, and home gardens. And all of this is happening in the context of a hor horrific global food crisis. And the number of people around the globe that are facing acute food insecurity increased by a whopping 34% last year. So a global, famine, a global famine has begun. And it will eventually get a whole lot worse. If you've not been preparing for such a scenario, I would strongly encourage you to get started. As I have detailed in this article, drug and food shortages are already here. And what we have been through so far is just the tip of the iceberg. And I have been telling you this over and over again, that it's time to stock up. And I don't care what you're doing. If you say you don't have money, every time you go to the grocery store, get just three extra cans of uh, beans or vegetables or something. That would be like $3, probably not even that much at Walmart. And then... If you're still having trouble stocking up, go to some of the food banks. Go to the church food bank. Go to your local food bank and get some things to eat now so you can stock up at the grocery store 
or stock up on what they're giving you. You've got to start preparing now. It's going to be too late when it hits us right in this country. So rice is going to be in short supply, but I would still get rice and beans. Rice you can put in mylar bags and it'll last forever with an oxygen absorber. Get beans, get dried beans. All of these can be had fairly cheaply. For $50, you can get a lot of beans and a lot of rice. So I'd advise you to start stocking up now. Stock up as much as you can, because I really believe what he says, that things are going to get worse as we go along. And if we enter a war, World War III, or just a war to uh, try to save Taiwan, or Russia decides that we're doing too much for Ukraine, whatever it happens to be, you are really going to see a food shortage. So please, please, please stock up as much as you can. And thank you so much for watching.